Hey guys, Chaz Dickel here. Today we're going to talk about subliminal messages in Disney movies. Now I'm sure you guys have all heard or seen the famous ones, like the bishop in The Little Mermaid popping a cold one during the wedding, the phallus in The Little Mermaid cover, and well, I could keep talking about penises in The Little Mermaid until my head falls off. But the most famous is probably this one. Simba in The Lion King kicking up dust and having it spell S-E-X, also known as sex. Or so it seems. Now this seems like an easy mistake for the animators to make. In fact, Tom Cito, a former Disney animator, said it was meant to say SFX as a shout out to the special effects crew. However, this was disputed and created controversy with groups such as the American Life League and anti-abortion group starting boycotts against Disney films. Now, it's unclear whether this had much of an impact on Disney's revenue, but it's clear that a juggernaut like Disney would not risk boycotts of its films unless it had something it felt was much more important to show the audience. So, let's back up. Who is this Tom Cito guy trying to cover up for Disney? Tom Cito is a world-renowned animator who worked for Disney for many years and now teaches at USC's film school. In 2006, Tom Cito wrote Drawing the Line, the untold story of the animation unions, which many say is the best account of the 1941 Walt Disney strike, where Walt Disney faced off against the unionizing animators. During the strike, it was said that Walt, the son of a socialist, acted like a colossal capitalist jackass. Also in the same year, the attack on Pearl Harbor occurred, and Disney was turned into a wartime propaganda machine for the U.S. government. This sets up an important dichotomy. The animators, who are the collective labor of Disney, versus the management, the capitalist pro-war bourgeoisie, profiting off the propaganda being sold to the masses. Walt Disney blamed the strike on communist subversion, and this became his new obsession, apart from model trains even testifying before the House Un-American Activities Commission, famous for the blacklisting of Hollywood artists under accusations of communist beliefs. He switched his political allegiance and donations to the Republican Party. Now, why does this matter? Let's fast forward. Disney is now the second largest media conglomerate on the planet. It owns movie producers Touchstone, Hollywood Pictures, Miramax, television channels like ABC, Disney Channel, ESPN, dozens of local television radio stations, and two major sports franchises. Countless popular franchises are also now under their control like Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars. With their hand firmly grasped on the media, there's a high likelihood that every single day something you watch is controlled by Disney. With their worldwide influence, they've continued Walt Disney's trend of political campaign contributions, and in the 2016 presidential campaign, donated two million dollars to the conservative solutions PAC, a pro marco rubio political action committee they also donated over three hundred thousand dollars to hillary clinton's campaign and about one million total to democrat groups now what could these candidates have in common that disney would want to support remember the disney strikes the first thing that they have in common is their distaste for communism marco rubio hails from cuba and is outspoken against the socialist government there Hillary Clinton spent the majority of her campaign stamping out Bernie Sanders' socialist ideas. This fits right along with Disney's history as anti-union and Walt's actively anti-communist politics. That's not the whole story, though. There is one other thing they're united in, and that's, yes, you guessed it, aliens. Both Marco Rubio and Hillary Clinton were the only candidates in the 2016 election to discuss extraterrestrials, with Clinton saying she wanted to send a task force to Area 51 to find out the truth about aliens. There's enough stories out there that I don't think everyone is just sitting in their kitchen making them up. She's also been pictured here with Lawrence Rockefeller, grandson of oil tycoon John D. Rockefeller, and a prominent UFO believer and lobbyist to the US government to release information about UFOs. See the book in her hand? That's a copy of Paul Davies' Are We Alone? Philosophical Implications of the Discovery of Extraterrestrial Life. Also, her campaign manager, John Podesta, has frequently discussed aliens, saying that his biggest failure as counselor to Barack Obama was not securing the disclosure of the UFO files. And let's not forget about Marco Rubio, who said, We have a significant testing range out in Nevada. Obviously, we have Area 51, where we keep the alien bodies from the... I'm just kidding. That's not true. Are you kidding? Marco? Rubio sits on the Senate Intelligence Committee and is briefed on classified matters, which would include government knowledge of extraterrestrials. So, how are aliens and communism related? Well, when you compare Western capitalist countries versus communist countries like China and Russia in terms of UFO sightings, it is clear that communist countries see very little UFOs and capitalist ones are much more heavily trafficked by aliens. It seems that communism is an effective deterrent against aliens. We blew those aliens away as soon as they came out of the ship. As a communist, I obviously believe in helping everyone, but I'd get on a plane to the USA before I helped any dirty alien. 
So why is Disney so interested in aliens and so against communism? The clear answer is that Disney, as part of a global media conspiracy, is colluding with the government to give our planet to the alien overlords that now control every facet of our world. The only effective response to this would be a collective uprising of the working class of the world, also known as communism. Walt saw this many years back and set the Disney Corporation on track to purposefully subvert labor movements and control what we all heard and saw. Disney already became a propaganda machine for the US, why couldn't it do so for the aliens? Why do you think Star Wars portrays aliens so positively? This brings it all back to The Lion King, a story of fighting back to reclaim the government that was rightfully yours, with Simba kicking up dust that said sex, a metaphor for the sex being used by the media conspiracy to distract us from the real message that animator Tom Cito left for us. Cito was trying to send us a message. He knew what was coming, and he was trying to warn us. And that's why. Open up. They're here. Open up. We know it's, it's Disney. Disney. We know it's through their chat. The mouse has found the Open up. Open the door. It's right too now. late for me. Tell Tom right, Cito. Right, right. I know. Jazz Dickel out. Open fire. <laughs>